I got to read this because it just came across my timeline. Okay. I had to about the whole fourth down fiasco. And it's not about being right or wrong. It's just trying to, I'm just trying to explain the situation Detroit was in and what they do. And everybody could disagree with it. Whether, you know, that's, that's the beauty of football. That's the beauty of these football games. In hindsight, we could always question what you do. Greg Olson, who, of course, joined us on the Morning Rush a couple weeks ago. I thought he was fantastic. Fantastic with Kevin Burkhart on Sunday. Greg Olson, like, he did not miss on Sunday. He had one of the best performances I've seen from a color analyst or heard from a color analyst in quite some time. And I'm saying and that's saying a lot because I think Troy Aikman's been pretty good. But he just tweeted this. Tweeted this at about 6 in the morning. The biggest criticism used against analytics is that it doesn't take into account the team or the situation. Michael Badgley, who is a Lions kicker, career from 48 yards plus, which would, that field goal would have been 47, 48. Career from 48 plus, he makes 45% of those kicks. 45%. So they also later tweets, why doesn't it take the points crowd include these pieces of info? Early in game, SF elected to attempt the field goal on fourth down. Some people question that decision by Shanahan. Moody missed a kick, obviously. So Badgley, and I was explaining this, he only had one kick of 40 0. He was four for four on the season. Hadn't really kicked all year. 45% conversion rate for 48 plus. Does that change anybody's like well, but kind of the, thought process? But, but but if you're gonna do that, the historical data in the playoffs is different than the regular season. Regular season, fifty one percent for okay. NFL conversion on fourth down. But it, in the playoffs, it dips down into the into the low, the high thirties. So like we could play that analytics game. I'm just going the no, field. He's, That's just he, no, he's he's not playing the analytics game. He basically what Greg Olson is saying is that the bigger Chris, biggest criticism using its analytics that it doesn't take into account the team the player, the situation, the coaching. It's basically yeah, and the robotic. Momentum. And the momentum. And the player, Michael Basley, has only made 45% of his 48-plus yard field but goals. But see, like I, I, when we were talking yesterday, I actually brought up all of the data regarding the average, the NFL average, Bagley's yeah. average from those distances, the average He's on, on third, fourth and third, on fourth and third, what the average conversion rate is. Right. But also in the playoffs, you're playing better defenses. Right. I don't know. No doubt. Look, but fourth we're and three, but, eye but, eye. but no, no, we're not. But I, I don't care about that. I'm just saying Detroit was 20 of 25 of fourth and threes or less all season long. That's 80% conversion rate. The numbers tell you, wow, they convert 80% of the time when it's fourth and three or less. That was a fourth and two. On the flip side, the kicker, the kicker, who's you had that you have on your roster, has only made 45% of his kicks from 48 plus. The data tells you right there, the facts tell you, go for it. I, I mean, the numbers are telling everybody that, whether it's analytics but or not. But if you're going to be, a, like, again, so, like, my whole thing is, if you if you say, I'm aggressive and this is what we do, well, then why don't you throw the ball into the end zone when it's 38 seconds to go and you've got multiple timeouts and it's 21-7 and it's first and goal after Amra St. Brown they did throw the ball first in, down. They did throw the ball into the end zone. One time it was a lob yeah. throw to throw away. It was, no, it was a throw no, away. J Jameer Gibbs was wide open. Wide open Monte, in the back it of the like end a, zone. It looked like a throwaway. And then the second no, one that, that was, was a no run throwaway. play. And then the third one was a screen pass. The, the, the Jameer Gibbs play wasn't no throwaway. That's he, what it looked he like missed to me. Him. He missed him. He know. flat out missed him. Greg Olsen said it. Kevin Burkhardt said it. He had Jameer Gibbs behind Fred Warner on that little, I don't know if it was an angle route or a C route, whatever it was. He flat out missed him. Flat out missed him. Look, at their offseason, whether we like it or not, he will always be remembered for what happened in that game because of the aggression and going for it. And it's going to live with him. It's going to live with him. It's the same way it lives with Shanahan. It's the same way it lives right. with LaFleur after not going for it on that fourth down when they kicked the field goal and gave the ball back to Tom Brady in the Tampa Bay-Green Bay game. That's just what happens. I mean, it's different. It's not the regular season. This is the playoffs. But they've been going for it all playoffs. Nobody had a problem with it. Well, it cost them the number one seed. <laughs> well, the referees cost them the number one seed. All right. The official did the official did not make the ball. Well, but after you Spinoli, get an, after you get a second opportunity and then a third opportunity, you have to take the points. That's holding offense number seventy six. They blow it. Let's go to uh, Coach Los Altos. Coach, what's happening? Oh my God, Bonte. Uh, Shasky, uh, Your voice is I don't still even hurting. know what to say, dude, dude, I had 
I had four of my, uh, I had my wife and three of my four kids, my one kid's up in Seattle and he couldn't come down. Um, and so, but I had five of us there, friends, everything. We we're about five rows from the field down by the Lions tunnel. And it, it was easily my favorite sporting event ever. Wow. Um, I, I, I still am blown away by how, by so many things. My, my quick points on the comeback, uh, the no huddle, Purdy, Debo, CMC running angry, the electricity from Debo right after halftime where he's saying, let's go, let's go. And he's got, you know, he's uh, reminded me of Friday Night Lights where the coach is, you know, uh, spinning his hand saying, let's go. The second one is the whether you call it the B.A. ricochet, the immaculate, <laughs> uh, you know, deflection, the IU fluke. I don't care what you call it. It happened right in front of us. I will never forget that it was it was our Lynn Swan Super Bowl moment it was uh I'll just I'll just never forget it I think the second point the fumble yeah Gip Gip was uh grasping at shadows uh the first half but that rip when he reached in there and pulled that and then to have Eric Armistead who's just a warrior and awesome dude with this you know plantar fasciitis sucks I've had it and the fact that he's in there and he gets the fumble, that just, that was game changing. At that moment, we had uh, put our hats on backwards, put the, the rally towels under our hats, the rows in front of us and behind us said, you can't move. You can't take those off. Everybody's jumping, dancing, screaming. You couldn't hear yourself think. The energy in the stadium, the security guy I was talking with afterwards is I was just lying there, just dead dead tired he grew up in candlestick he said this is the first time it felt like candlestick in the day so the question i have for you for so the question i have for you guys and i really want to hear your answer is wilkes has vowed to address the defensive issues before the super bowl how's he gonna do it and and with and with with that, I will see you in Vegas, baby. See, Let's go Niners. See you in Vegas, Coach. I, there was a play in the second half, and I noticed it a couple times because I was talking to Lubbock last night. Chase Young was, it was so asked bad. to drop in coverage. Chase Young in coverage. And watching him drop in coverage, the guy had no idea what he was doing. Now, again, Steve Oaks loves to blitz, right? He told us midway through the year. I'm still trying to learn this scheme. The defense was not good on Sunday. They bit, they bit, they bit, they bit, they bit. They didn't break. And if you make the mistakes this defense made against Green Bay and the Detroit Lions, you would get your ass blown out in the Super Bowl by Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. The screen game for Detroit worked. What does Andy Reid do? Andy Reid may be the best screen game coordinator, best screen game constructor, play caller no in the doubt. history of the NFL. All right? <laughs> That's a problem. If you want to run a lot of zone, what Steve Wilkes did against Detroit, well, Patrick Mahomes and company are going to destroy that zone. You see what they did to Baltimore's zone defense? And, and he he always has creativity for you. Remember in the last Super Bowl, he had that, that trick play where everybody moved. At and, the goal line, uh, yeah. yeah. like he always brings that to the table, though, when you give him a couple of weeks, right, B? So, so Steve Wilkes, I, listen, I'm just, I'm just praying that Nick Balsa has an all-time performance. Fred Water, Dre Greenlaw do what they do, and they're going to have their heads full with – with Travis Kelsey, and if you get match up Drake Greenlaw as much as I love him, if you match up Drake Greenlaw and Travis Kelsey, it's going to be a long day for the 49ers defense. And then you got Jair Brown and Chachai Gibson in the back end. Kansas City gets deep with him. McCall Hartman last season. How many Jets sweeps did he rush? Did he have three touchdowns yeah. against the 49ers and Levi's? Almost the same play, it felt like, all at the goal line. So, yeah, Steve Wilkes is going to have his hands full. I have no idea what he does. Well, No idea how he defends Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid in the Super Bowl. Uh... It- like, what about the personnel adjustments? Because, like, Oren Burks was getting wiped out. And I know that that, that one uh, linebacker on those, on those like, toss plays and those sweep plays, I mean, you're, you're just – it's really difficult. You got two people blocking you, and you're going to have to make a play. It just feels like he gets washed out. And then yep. it's Gibson coming up or the other safety, Jair Brown, having to come up and make a tackle in space. And more times than not, they're eating grass. They're eating and, grass. And, like, I know we want to blame Wilkes, so I'm, I'm asking, like – do they even have the personnel to be able to make that adjustment on those toss plays? Yeah, I, I think. Like, I'm being fair. Yeah, I'm trying no, to be fair the here. Personnel, like, maybe we've overrated the personnel around Warner and Greenlaw and Bosa. Maybe the personnel is just not that good. 
Now, Kansas City's offensive line, is it the same as Detroit's? I think Detroit has one of the better, if not I mean, the best yeah. offensive line Ragnall in all good. of football. Panay Sewell, I'm telling you guys, man, he's an all-timer. That guy is nasty. He does everything. He's pulling. Yeah, he's he's nice. down blocking. He's he's running routes. He was open for a little route. He leaked out. I mean, this guy is nasty. Do, does Kansas City have anybody like that? Their offensive line is good, and Mahomes got plenty of protection against Baltimore, especially in that first half. I mean, Mahomes, let's just call it what it is. I mean, he's infinitely more mobile and pocket-aware than Jared Goff. Yep. You know, like, you, you get him off his platform, he'll still make a ridiculous throw downfield. You get Goff to move around, and your percentages of him completing the pass go way right. down. I mean, that's like, that is like a fact. Um, on that play where the fumble happened, the, the Jameer Gibbs... Either he went to the wrong side, Goff went to the wrong side. Clearly there was some sort of miscommunication. Your boy Olsen was talking about it. Like, right. He went to the wrong side, they yeah, think. Yeah, Jameer Kibbs. And yeah, he, never he, had got the, he had his left arm up instead of his right arm. Yep. Yeah, and he never really got the ball tucked away. And Gibson came in and punched it out. And Armstead, who's kind of like trailing on the play, it just falls into his lap. They were so fortunate to have that happen in that moment. Right. I mean, so fortunate. And it was like, boom, and the first play of all plays, like right away. So, yeah, the momentum was just, that was a killer play. I don't know if that's a rookie making a mistake. I don't know if, that, I feel like it's not on golf. It had to be on the rookie running yeah, back. Yeah, it was. But, Jameer, but that was Jameer Gibbs kept telling everybody, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. That, that was a functional mistake. Like, that was, that's a, that, you, you lined up improperly or whatever, went to the wrong side improperly. Like, that, that's a mental mistake. No, it's a huge mistake. It's a blunder. It's a championship mistake. I mean, the mistake. kid's going to have to live with it. He was awesome all game, and he's going to have to live with that all offseason. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, Jay Flowers is going to have to live with it in Baltimore. Look, he, you know, these young oh rookies here. He you was know, so good have to, in that game, too. So, so, yeah, no doubt. And Detroit will think about that. Like, Detroit. I lost. I'm out. Considering I'm out. how <laughs> Detroit may not never, ever have an opportunity like that. Oh, my gosh, that city's got to be sick right now. And, and you brought up, uh, you know, Kelsey. When you watch it back now, you could say Joe was a byproduct of how they were scheming him or whatever. Laporta was destroying the Niners, and he would catch the ball underneath the sticks and then plow through two and three guys. If you don't think Travis Kelsey can do similar things, you're tripping. Well, he's the best tight end to ever live, right? It's him and Gronk, I feel like. I mean, Travis Kelsey, the your, best receiving your, tight end, yeah. just broke a postseason take record your, take your for pick. most catches in postseason history. I mean, he's Travis Kelsey had 11 targets on Sunday against Baltimore. He caught all 11 passes, all 11 targets. Kelsey brought down for a catch. Uh, 